Makki di roti is a cornmeal flatbread from the land of the five rivers, Punjab. Serve this crisp and toasty roti with a generous dollop of butter and Punjabi sag for a comfort food experience like no other. You'll first need to bring a pot of water to the boil and season it with some salt. This is fine cornmeal which you can find in most supermarkets these days and you do want the fine cornmeal rather than the coarse kind which can be gritty. Keep this over a low heat and combine the mixture using the end of a rolling pin or a wooden spoon. Once it comes together as a loose shaggy dough, you want to switch the heat off and cover the pan with a lid. To keep the mucky di roti nice and soft, I like to add a touch of oil at this point just to knead it. We're kneading this after about 20 minutes so the dough has had a chance to cool down. Knead the dough by hand for about 8-10 to 10 minutes using this flattening motion with the palm of your hand. Since this is an entirely gluten-free bread, it's really important to work the dough well. If you don't, you could end up with lots of tears and cracks in your mucky di roti. When the dough comes together into a smooth ball like this, it's ready. If you're not making the roti straight away, you can cover it with a piece of cling film to prevent it from drying out. I'm making mine now, but will cover the dough with a lid to stop it from drying out. Take a portion of the dough and begin rolling it in between your palms into this spinning top-like shape. We want it thick in the centre and thinner on the edges. Now using both hands, begin to pat the dough out just like this. Your fingers and thumbs should be doing most of the work as you turn and spin this between your hands and your palms will just keep the dough stable and steady. The reason why we form the mucky di roti by hand and not with a rolling pin is because the bread contains no gluten, therefore it does have a tendency to split and crack. Now once the dough gets to this size, some people like to form the roti by patting it to and fro from one palm to the other. However, I find it much easier to lay the dough straight down onto the board like this with lots and lots of extra cornmeal and then spin and turn using my hands. This way we retain much more control over the shape and evenness of this roti and eliminate the chances of it breaking. The maki di roti is now ready to cook so you need to preheat a dava, griddle or frying pan over a medium low heat. Very carefully lay the roti down onto the dava. You can also take this opportunity to neaten up some of those edges if they're looking a little bit scrappy. Now carefully drop a couple of teaspoons of water onto the surface of the roti. We're going to rub this in to eliminate any cracks. The water here will also keep the roti nice and soft. After about 90 seconds you can turn the roti over and still keep this over a medium low heat. Since we applied some water onto this roti, this side will initially stick to the dava, but don't worry. After about 90 seconds to 2 minutes, it should gently come away. Now we need to cook the other side of the maki di roti once more, and I like to do this over an open flame, but if you're not comfortable doing this, you can continue to cook the other side on the dava or frying pan. The roti may or may not puff up, it doesn't really matter either way, it's still going to taste delicious. You can continue to cook this until it is done to your liking. Now all that's left to do is to make some holes in the top of these rotis and spread with butter and plenty of it. Let me show you one more time.
Let me know if you'd like my recipe for Punjabi Sarson Ka Saag in the comments and if you haven't already subscribed to my channel then please do hit that button and press the bell icon to be notified whenever I upload a new recipe. See you next time.